So just a, <clears throat> a couple things before we get started. Um, as you saw from the president yesterday, we're not meeting after Thanksgiving break. And, um, and, and so it really won't change much for what we do here. That week would be sort of catch up on whatever we didn't get finished. Maybe on Monday, then Wednesday and Friday, it would be review for the final exam, would have been the plan. And we'll just do that um, virtually. Uh, if there's a need for a lecture, which there might be on Monday, I would do that. And then it would be maybe send out some review materials, hold office hours um, virtually, and um, work with you in whatever way I can to help you get prepared for the final that you'll take um, during finals week. And um, that final will be um, similar in form to the exam that we just took. So it'll be open book, open notes, here's the material, get it done by whatever day um, I, I decide to have it um, completed by. There won't be a formal, we're going to meet, I know there's a scheduled time that we're supposed to meet, but we won't meet at that scheduled time. Um, um, so um, the, um, I think it'll work out just fine for us if you have concerns or questions or um, uh, challenges, um, let me know, and I'm happy to work with you and, uh, and try and help. The other thing is, uh, not this Friday, but next Friday, we'll have our second quiz. And the quiz will just be similar to the first quiz, but it's going to be chapters 5 and 6. I'll make um, it available. We won't meet formally. I'll make it available before class starts. It'll be a due sometime before we meet again on Monday. Um, uh, after that. Um, so I'll get you some more details on that, but it will cover chapters five and six if you just want to um, sort of have that in the back of your mind. Um, what else? I can't think of anything else. Questions? We're good? All right, so we're going to start on chapter six today, which is um, this idea of correlation. And then chapter seven is a, a chapter that we'll spend... Um, We'll spend a little bit of time on it's called regression, which is a which is a more sophisticated, mm, a different kind of correlation. We'll spend just a little bit of time on it, but it's a topic that it's a topic that um, we could spend the whole semester on. As a graduate student, I took a class that that's all we did for sixteen weeks is regression, and so um, we'll just spend a little bit of time on seven, and then we'll 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 skip on to. Um, so, some other topics. And so when we think of the idea of correlation, I think oftentimes we use the term correlation uh, somewhat casually um, and, and just talk and, and, and we'll use it to describe things that go together. And, um, and, and, and I, I hear people do that often. I don't correct them usually, but it, but it, I, I usually, um, want to because when I think of correlation, I think of the mathematical concept that we're going to be talking about in this class or the statistical concept that we're going to be talking about in this class. And it's, it's, not, it's not as casual as people, as people um, use it. They'll oftentimes talk about correlation uh, amongst things that can't be correlated. You just, that just doesn't make sense. They're using, obviously, they're using the term correlation more loosely than I would, or, or I do. Um, but we're talking about not that casual use of the word uh, correlation, but the very more formal statistical idea of um, um, variables, data, uh, being um, uh, correlated. And so um, we can think of correlation as a measure of both direction and degree of relationship that exists between two variables. And I assume that you've had some picking up a newspaper, picking up, just reading, sort of uh, uh, living, you, you've been exposed to the idea of correlation in the more statistical uh, sense that we're going to talk about here. So I don't, I don't think this is completely new to you. Um, so if it's review, uh, apologies for that, but, but I think it, it's useful to, to cover a few of these concepts 
uh, in a little bit uh, of detail. So correlation is a measure of direction, one, and degree of relationship, two. Um, so those two ideas, uh, whenever we talk about correlation, well, what's the direction and what's the degree? Um, and then also, um, it, it's between two variables. We, if, if you have six variables, you, you, we don't talk about six variables being correlated. Um, you might talk about different pairs of those six variables being correlated, but it's between two variables, not between sets of variables that would make up uh, some number greater than two. Um, uh, really important for our purposes here, and some of the assignments that you'll see in this class, um, is that the level of measurement, think back to what seems like now several months ago, I guess it was several weeks ago, or maybe a little bit longer, we had four levels of measurement. We had nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. If we're going to correlate two variables, we have to be certain that the level of measurement of those variables are interval or ratio. If it's nominal or ordinal, uh, don't do it. And so you'll, you'll see, um, and I'll give you data to work with, and you'll have to sort of determine what's interval and ratio and what might be nominal or ordinal, and then not correlate things that are that are um, involved nominal or ordinal measured variables. So the variables, both of the variables, have to be measured on an interval or ratio scale. Um, and um, we can think about we can think about um, uh, several different uh, characteristics: the direction, the strength, and then also the idea of a linear or nonlinear relationship. We're going to focus on linear relationships in this class, but there is this concept of nonlinear relationships that I'll touch that I'll touch on uh, as well. Um, so first direction, um, a positive or direct correlation or relationship, and you could refer to it uh, using any of those terms: uh, positive correlation direct correlation, uh, positive relationship, direct relationship, any of those would be synonyms to, to denote that, um, that um, higher values on one of your variables, say the x variable, are associated with higher values on your other variable, the y variable, or said differently but essentially the same, mathematically the same, lower values associated on, on one of your variables, say the x variable, are associated with lower values on your other va variable, say your um, y um, variable. So that's a positive or um, a direct relationship. And you know a correlation is positive when you compute the correlation coefficient, which we'll talk about in more detail. And the number is positive. The number is greater than zero. That's how we know it's positive. And if it's obviously less than zero, we know it's um, we know it's um, uh, not a direct or positive uh, relationship. So um, some examples of things that um, are directly correlated or positively correlated: um, level of education and income are positively correlated. If we, uh, at least in this country, got le good data on how much education do you have, good data on what's your income, we would see a positive correlation. It's not perfect. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a 1.0 correlation. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's a, it's a substantial, it's a substantial correlation. Um, height and weight, uh, likewise, are, um, uh, directly correlated. There's a there's a positive relationship between a person's height and their weight. Again, um, that doesn't mean there can't be exceptions to the rule. That doesn't mean it's a perfect correlation. A perfect correlation would mean there's no exceptions to the rule. Everybody who's tall uh, weighs more. Everybody who is short weighs less. And we know that there's exceptions. So the, 
the correlation between height and weight isn't perfect, but it's substantial. Um, I don't I don't know what the number is off the top of my head. We could we could uh, do a Google search and we could get a number pretty quickly. My my guess is. Um, also, uh, the third one, people who consume more news have more political knowledge, right? Uh, ask people, how much do you read newspapers, uh, read, listen to news, watch news, uh, consume news, whatever that looks like for you? Ask them that, those kinds of questions. Uh, quantify how much they do that. And then also quantify the knowledge that they have about politics. And you would see that people who consume more news have more knowledge. Lots of exceptions to that rule as well. It's not a perfect correlation. So we'd find people who, um, who consume a lot of news, uh, and they might not know how many Supreme Court justices there are or, or who their, their, their two senators are or who their congressperson is or what does some particular politics, so there'd be a lot of exceptions to the rule, but again, just because there's exceptions to the rule doesn't mean that there's not a substantial correlation between those two, um, between those two entities. Um, uh, how many hours you study and GPA, uh, as somebody who's uh, been in the classroom for nearly 20 years, uh, it seems to me I've never uh, asked students how much they study and quantify that and then correlate that with the grade that they get in my class. But if I could, uh, if I was interested, I'm certain I'd find a, a, a substantial correlation. Uh, again, not perfect. Um, in the social sciences that and all of these aren't all social sciences, but but in all of these examples, um, we wouldn't. Um, we wouldn't, um, we would never expect to see a perfect correlation. Uh, and I don't know in what, I don't know in what um, area of research you would s uh, expect to see a perfect correlation. Um, it wouldn't be an area that would be very interesting to me because, you know, every, everything would be uh, uh, sort of uh, um, in lockstep, in unison, no exceptions to rules, no. And so, um, uh, what what we'll see is um, is um, uh, relationships amongst variables where the trend is generally true, but that doesn't mean that there can't be exceptions to that trend. And so just keep that in mind. And then the the important note, and we'll talk about this some um, uh, over the uh, next couple class periods, is just because we have correlation, we can't conclude that there's causation. Just because two things are correlated doesn't mean that one caused the other. And there's a lot of silly examples. We'll talk about some of those silly examples of things that are correlated. And, and, you, and, and, and if somebody were to present that to you as well, then um, uh, pickles must cause pregnancy. Well, no, I don't think, uh, I don't think dill pickles uh, cause uh, pregnancy. And so we'll look at some of those examples and... Um, and uh, talk more carefully about what is causation and how do we, um, how do we, um, uh, it's, it's not a math, it's a, a little bit of the causation uh, is mathematical, just one part of it. Um, the rest of it's logical. And so we'll talk about the logic that's associated with causation um, a, a, as well. And so, um, and still talking about the direction of the relationships. So we have positive relationships. We also have what we call negative or inverse relationships uh, between uh, variables as well. And um, either term would be would be appropriate to. If you said inverse, uh, I would know what you're talking about. If you said negative, I I would know what you're talking about. Um, in this case, lower values on x are associated with higher values on y, right? As one goes up, the other goes down. Or as one goes down, the other goes up. Uh, logically, this saying the same thing in both cases. It's just that they don't move, they don't move together, they move in different directions. And so we have direct and inverse relationships amongst variables of interest. And um, I just have three examples here. Um, 
The more you watch TV, the uh, lower your GPA is. They're inversely related. Or said differently, um, the less you watch TV, the higher your GPA is. And so there's a, there's a, th those two variables aren't directly related. As one goes up, for example, amount of number of hours of television one watches in a day, as one goes up, the other goes down, uh, uh, for example, uh, GPA. Uh, as uh, world oil production goes up, as we found in March of this year, uh, price of gas uh, goes down. Um, and so, um, and, and in that case, it was both uh, um, uh, Middle Eastern countries produced uh, a lot of oil because they wanted to um, uh, suppress the uh, price of oil. And, but we also had people stop driving uh, at the same time because of the pandemic. So, but those two things are inversely related. As, as oil production increases, price of gasoline decreases. Or as uh, oil production decreases, right, at less supply on the market, uh, the price of gasoline inevitably uh, increases. Um, as employment rate uh, goes up, presidential approval, whoever uh, that person is, goes down. Or as employment rate goes down, presidential approval goes up. And that's a historical trend that, that you could find uh, um, across um, uh, decades of data. So we have direct and indirect uh, uh, relationships amongst variables and um, and some examples to help you and uh, uh, have a sense of what those are. And so that's the direction part of, uh, of, of correlation. And then we have the degree of the relationship. And so the correlation coefficient, all of the ones that, uh, that I work with, all of the ones that I've ever seen, range between minus 1 and plus 1. Mathematically, they can't be greater than minus 1. I'm sorry, less than minus one. Uh, mathematically, they can't be less than minus one. And mathematically, they can't be greater than plus one. So they're bound between minus one and plus one. With a minus one and one indicating the perfect relationship, uh, I've never worked with data where I compute a correlation and it comes out perfect. If it did, I wouldn't believe it. If it did, I, there's, there's something, uh, something strange going on. Uh, so um, uh, just because they're not perfect doesn't mean they're not interesting. And uh, some of the most interesting correlations are the ones that that maybe um, are far from perfect um, because there's a lot of, there's a trend there, but and there's also a lot of exceptions to that trend. Um, again, not found in social sciences, as I mentioned earlier, that is that perfect correlation. Um, and even if we have a perfect correlation, that doesn't mean that one of your variables caused the changes um, in the other variable. So a perfect correlation does not mean causation. Uh, um, we'll, and we'll talk, we'll talk about that in some more detail. Um, this table here is useful to um, uh, sort of commit to um, to memory or at least have some sense of these values as rules of thumb. And um, I can have, what I'll have you do in some cases is here's some data, compute the calculations or the correlations, uh, probably not by hand, probably in, uh, in Python, compute the correlations and now tell me, is this small, medium, or large? I like the idea of having um, some framework to put that degree of relationship uh, within. And so um, these are in absolute terms. So get rid of the, the um, negative sign. If they're negative, it doesn't matter whether it's an inverse relationship or a positive relationship. Um, and so these are abso in absolute values. Anything less than absolute 
approximately 0.1, we would consider small. Um, anything between approximately 0.11 and 0.49, we would consider medium. And then anything greater than approximately 0.5, we would consider large. In the social sciences and the communication sciences that, that I work in and the work that I do uh, for the university, rarely do we see things that correlate greater than, 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 than 0.5. There are some things, but they're 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 really um, they're really things that uh, something that might be is um, um, yeah. I'll just I'll just leave it at that. They're 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 they're, they're rare. Um, they're rare to find, but but not not um, not unheard of. Um, and so what this is useful for is as one um, potentially consumes research, as one uh, does research, as one is um, asked to present research, um, it's useful to be able to characterize the degree of relationship between variables and to be able to say, um, yeah, I know this correlation is only uh, 0.20, but we would still consider that, social scientists would still consider that to be a medium correlation. That correlation is still uh, substantial. And um, I think anything above a medium, if you were a careful observer, you would be able to deduce the correlation by um, observing whatever the phenomena is that's being measured or by just looking at the data uh, without actually calculating a correlation coefficient. You would, you'd be able to see the trends. Oh yeah, these, these uh, number of hours of TV are going up and we're, we're seeing lower GPAs and these numbers, these people have uh, watched less TV and, and they have uh, greater GPAs. And so you, anything above a medium, a careful ob observer, would probably be able to deduce, uh, ascer determine, ascertain um, some degree of relationship. Um, for sure, if it's greater than, than the 0.5, it's, if it's in the large area, you would almost have to um, try not to um, uh, observe it or to try not to, um, to see it in order to miss it because it's, it would the trend would be that substantial that you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't miss it uh, unless you were um, uh, just had your head buried in something else. And so uh, these rules of thumb are are useful. You should start this page. I'll ask you to come back to this again. I don't think it's in your textbook, and so um, you'll you'll um, this will be a, a valuable resource as we as we continue in this class. And then I think it's also a valuable resource as we continue to um, look at and um, uh, consume data in our lives. Um, and so one of the ways that we um, look at um, correlations between variables is with what we call a scatter plot. And so the two, the two most popular kinds of graphics, anecdotally, I don't know this, I, I've not studied this uh, or, or or measured it, but anecdotally, the two most um, popular kinds of um, graphics would be the histogram that we talked about earlier and uh, a scatter plot. Um, I use them uh, every day, uh, nearly. If I'm doing data analysis, it's just something that it's just something that is um, uh, very common. And so, a scatter plot is a chart that uses the x and y coordinates to display variables, the values of your two variables. You've seen these before, I'm certain. And the data is displayed as a collection of points, with each uh, having one coordinate on the horizontal axis and one on the, um, on the vertical axis. We'll um, make, have Python do scatter plots for us and we'll get things that look like this. 
And so this is um, not interesting data probably for most of us, but it is um, how much did you pay for a car in uh, thousands of dollars on the vertical axis and the um, horsepower of the car on the, on the horizontal or the x-axis. And we can see, so each of these, each of these points, and I need to try to stay at the screen so others can sort of see what I'm demonstrating, so you'll have to sort of, so like this, each of these points represents two pieces of data, right? Here's a car that costs uh, about $48,000 that has somewhere around 200 and 70 horsepower. Um, and here's a car that costs um, less than 10K. Obviously, these aren't all new, or this data isn't from, from 2020. Uh, here's a car that costs less than 10K, maybe about 8K, but the horsepower of the motor is um, probably smaller than some lawnmowers, um, riding lawnmowers anyway, so it's less than just slightly over uh, 50 horsepower. But we can, you can see you wouldn't need you wouldn't need this correlation of point uh, uh, one seven nine written on top to be able to whoops to be able to to be able to see that yeah as as the values go up on the on the x axis they also tend to go up on the on the y axis right. As one goes up, the other goes up, or as one goes down, the other goes down. And we know that that's a positive correlation. We may not know that it's a point, we, we wouldn't know that it's a 0.79 without having some software tell us, well, what's the correlation between these two variables? Um, but there's also some, some exceptions to the rule or, or things that might be... Um, might be like here's a smaller car here in terms of horsepower that's kind of pricey uh, maybe not by our standards today but by certainly standards of if this data is uh, 20 years ago by standards of 20 years ago so it's the horsepower is just a little bit over 130 probably and the cost of the car was over um, thirty thousand dollars which which is a bit low on the horsepower side and a bit high on the price side. And we can tell that because it's sort of outside of the main of all of the other points that we are, that we are, um, that, that, that we're seeing. So that's um, an example of a scatter plot, uh, uh, easy enough for us to make in Python, really laborious and not a useful exercise to make um, by hand. And so we won't we um, won't engage in, in that in this class. Another example, this is um, literally hundreds of thousands of points of data, and it's the price that somebody paid uh, in dollars for um, a diamond and the number of carats of that diamond. And nobody probably has to tell any of us that there's a positive correlation between the size of the diamond and the price. We all know that. But we also all probably know that the correlation isn't perfect, right? You can have some really big diamonds that might look, uh, that have blemishes, right? That have, and, and so, but we can see from, from this data, again, that as, as the carat size goes up, so does the price. Or as price goes down, so does generally the, the size of, of the diamond. And like this big black area here, it's just, it's just hundreds and thousands of points of data, so it's not. It might not be as useful as uh, if I were doing this for a presentation. I might just sort of randomly get rid of about half of those points, just because it would probably visually, instead of just being a big black blob in the middle, you could see the points with more clarity, and um, and, um, and and that might be a value. But again, we can see exceptions to the rule as well, right? Like here's some diamonds towards the top that are relatively small, right? Less than a carat, but the price is uh, probably looks like um, uh, well over um, 
well over. And these, these diamond prices aren't uh, current market diamond prices. This data is also um, dated. They're two, both of these, the two data sets that I just showed you are very popular data sets amongst data scientists to display things. Another one, um, we'll talk about, we'll use this one in class actually, the Titanic data, the passengers on the ship. Uh, and that's another really popular uh, set of data that um, that um, data scientists work with. And so this is this is probably 30 years old, if not more. Um, this is an example of a inverse correlation, and it's um, miles per gallon that your car would get, and the horsepower of the vehicle. And so um, we know that, or many of us know that cars that have a larger, greater horsepower aren't as efficient in terms of uh, highway uh, uh, miles per gallon, and we can see we can see that trend right as 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 horsepower as horsepower goes down. There tends to be an uptick, an up an increase in the miles per gallon. Likewise, as horsepower goes up as we move up on horsepower, there tends to be a lowering of the miles per gallon, and that's again an example of a um, of an inverse or negative correlation. And then, I, in this case, the dots are colored by the kind of vehicle, which would just add some additional um, detail to the scatter plot. For our purposes, it's not useful or particularly useful here. What I'm interested in us doing is to be able to visualize what a direct and indirect correlation might look like. Um, here is not a very strong correlation, but it's a small correlation. And by small, I mean it's less than a 0 0.10. And it's also, uh, in this case, it's, um, it's, it's slightly, it's negative as well. And so uh, the two variables are, um, how much do you trust the media, and how optimistic or pessimistic of a person are you? People who tend to trust the media, um, people who tend to trust the media, tend to be uh, 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 tend to be slightly less um, uh, pessimistic than people who um, don't trust the media. They tend to be slightly. Um, Slightly more uh, pessimistic. So that, but that's, and you wouldn't be able to this if somebody gave you this scatter plot and said, "Does there look like there's a correlation here?" I would say I have no idea, because it doesn't look like anything. You would have to actually compute the correlation, and then we'd say, "Oh yeah, there does look like there's something. It is small." We'll talk about we'll talk about um, um, some of the the considerations that one would. Uh, have to consider when um, when uh, calculating uh, correlation coefficients because um, they're by chance never exactly zero um, and so if it's not if it can never be exactly zero how do we know if it's meaningful or not and that's the idea of a hypothesis test would allow us to test that, and we'll talk um, in some detail about hypothesis tests and how we can use that to, to determine what, how small is too small to be uh, uh, meaningful. Um, another small uh, correlation that, again, if somebody handed this to me and said, is there a correlation? It doesn't look like it to me, but I don't know without actually doing it. But the correlation is not zero, but it's really close to zero. And uh, and it's it's definitely below, it's considerably below what we considered the sm the small mark, which was 0.10. Um, and so um, we can also talk about uh, whether a relationship between two variables are linear or nonlinear. Um, a linear relationship between two variables is when um, uh, the relationship between the two variables can best be represented by a straight line, and that's what we're 
that's what we've been able to sort of, that's what we've been talking about uh, heretofore, that, that it's linear because we can draw a straight line that will best capture all of those points. A nonlinear relationship is when, um, is when um, a curved line, some kind of curved line, maybe an inverted U or a U of some kind, is, it better captures the association between two variables. Our focus here is going to be on linear uh, correlation, not the nonlinear kinds of correlations, but um, I think it's useful to consider uh, the, the distinction. Uh, for example, um, there is, and this is a fact, regardless of where you end up uh, working, if you work there for a lot of years, your salary does not keep up with the marketplace. Um, unless you work for an exceptionally good com company that, that just makes sure that, um, that, that their employees that are there, that are loyal, are compensated uh, as well as new people that they hire uh, off the street. And so there is, a, in, in many, if not most, organizations, as your, um, as you, the relation, as, as your years of service are, are low, your um, salary would tend to increase, right? So your start with the company, you get a couple of promotions, you get some increases, you show the people that care, that you can um, competently do the work, they're impressed, they give you more responsibility, with more responsibility usually comes uh, additional um, salary. But then at some point, as years of service reaches some, and it, it depends on the organization that you're working for, but as years of service reaches some um, tipping point, your, um, you will see that uh, uh, salary does not keep up with um, salary does not keep up with uh, with the marketplace, and so um, there would be a, a decrease uh, across um, individuals who uh, and people call it by different names. Um, they'll call it a so-called loyalty tax, right? If you're loyal to your company. Um, you end up having to pay a tax because you know the best way to get a pay increase is to not be loyal and to go out and find another job uh, with a comp get a competitive competitive offer that that will make you um, uh, additional resources. Um, the other um, another example of a another example of a um, nonlinear correlation. Um, how many people are in public speaking this semester? Are they a couple people? Um, there's a nonlinear correlation between um, the anxiety that you feel before you give your speech. Let's say you're, you're being assigned a speech to, to give on whatever the topic is. There's a nonlinear relationship between the amount of anxiety and how well you do the speech. Um, Somebody who has no anxiety about standing in front of 100 people and uh, talking about something um, generally doesn't do very well. Even, even public speakers that, that speak consistently, regularly. Some I teach, stand in front of people all the time. There's, it's good to have a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of nervousness, a little bit of anxiety that, that is associated with... Um, with um, standing in front of a group uh, motivates you to prepare, motivates you to make sure that you have all of the details straight. And so somebody who has no anxiety about uh, standing in front of a group of people uh, generally doesn't do very well in a speech at all. The people who do, so it, it would look sort of like this. The, the curve would look sort of like the curve that you see on the board. Um, uh, so really low anxiety probably doesn't do very well in the speech. What it takes is somebody to do really well in the speech, you want to have some anxiety. Uh, again, so you're motivated. You uh, take the time to um, put together your notes. Maybe even, uh, heaven forbid, rehearse the thing at home before you um, have to give it in front of 100 people. That's the person who's going to probably get the highest grade in the speech. 
and um, this is from this is from my experience of teaching public speaking when I was a grad student. Uh, unfortunately, there's also the student, and, and that makes everybody in the classroom feel uh, nervous, who is too anxious to stand in front of a group, and um, and their anxiety might come out in different ways. They might just not be able to look at the audience, um, which is not a good uh, strategy for having a successful speech, right? If you can't look at the audience. Um, they might be so nervous that, they, um, that they're unable to um, remember or perform in a, in a way that, that um, conveys with um, um, certainty uh, or um, with, um, with um, the, the degree of confidence that, that they would want because they're so nervous. Um, the, um, probably the, the one that, in my experience, gets students the most is even though you tell them this is an extemporaneous speech, you can have uh, a, um, some notes, but don't write your speech out. Don't write it out word for word. Um, students who are really nervous will write their speech out word for word, and they'll stand at a podium and they'll read their speech uh, word for word from a piece of paper, maybe never look up at the audience. And it just, it just falls, uh, it just falls. Unfortunately, it makes everybody in the room uncomfortable because they know that the person is uncomfortable and nobody likes to, nobody likes to um, be in that situation. Um, but, um, but it's not, it's not, um, it's not the best uh, uh, performance that, that you'd want for a public speak. Uh, speech. And so the relationship between anxiety and grade on exam, uh, grade on the speech is not linear. It doesn't go up. Uh, it goes up for a ways and then it, then it goes down. So we would say that that relationship between those two variables, like salary and years of service, is um, nonlinear. Um, let's talk just a We'll, we'll cover this screen and then uh, we'll come back to this on, um, on Friday and this is where we'll start. So we have um, this idea that correlation does not mean causation. We've talked about that already. Just because two things, excuse me, just because two things are correlated doesn't mean uh, that they're causally connected. Doesn't mean that one causes the changes in the other. In order to establish causality, the three criteria below have to be met. Only the first criteria, only the first criteria is mathematical. We do have, the two things have to be correlated in order for there to be uh, causality. So causality is a necessary, I'm sorry, correlation is a necessary but not sufficient condition for causality. You ha they have to be correlated or there can't be causation, but just because they're correlated doesn't mean that there's necessarily causation. But that's the first, that's the first uh, uh, piece of evidence that one would um, get together. Okay, I have these two variables. I want to know if they're causally related. Well, let's see if, are they, are they correlated in a meaningful way? If they're not correlated, then there's no way that they can be causally connected. If they are correlated, okay, we, we can check off number one. And then we have to go to number two. Does the cause take place before the effect? Does the independent variable happen before the dependent variable? If you don't know, then you have to say, well, I can't do number two, and you have to just walk away. There's, there's not anything that you can do to help you um, uh, beyond that point. Design another study, collect different data, uh, figure something else out. But if you can't establish that the independent variable happens in time before the dependent variable or the cause takes place before the effect, then you're, you're out of luck. The only kind of research that allows us to confidently establish number two is experimental research. And so, if you take a research methods class, you'll see that um, you'll see that um, 
that'll be talked about in much more detail. You can't do it with any other kind of research. And then the third uh, criteria is that this idea of a spurious correlation that we can't, um, we have to be able to rule out that third variables can explain away some observed correlation that both, both of your variables are being caused by some third variable. We'll talk about a bunch of examples of that when we uh, get together again on uh, Friday. And we'll pick up here uh, again when we um, get together on Friday. Questions? Have a good rest of your um, Wednesday, and I'll see you on Friday.